I'll show you how I created this resin beach scene using quartz crystals. I'll start by mixing my art resin on kitchen scales, mixing equal parts of hardener and resin, stirring very slowly for about five minutes. And I'll be using Lares Expressions pigments today, and this is a beautiful white sand color. And I want to get two shades of sand, a light and a dark. So I'll mix some of the angel white into that sand color for just to lighten it a bit. And this is the light and sand going on first and then the natural color. This beautiful frosty mint color is perfect for the pastel look that I'm going for today. I just want a light, a really light painting, light water. So that's just ideal. And I'll also combine it with this aqua ocean. You can see that the aqua ocean is a beautiful pearlesque color. I love to combine those types of colors, shiny colors with the matte color, which is the frosty mint because they just contrast with one another you can see it there and I'm just going to pop some bubbles with the blowtorch and I do plan to tilt my board to blend those colors but I'm just going to spread it out a little bit first and then I'm going to angle it. I like to treat my resin ocean paintings like they're real so I want to get the flowing water look so I angle the board and imagine how the water would actually flow in this particular piece. And the heat gun helps to move it along too and even get the heat onto it because it starts to activate some lacing while I'm tilting the board if I'm blowing the heat onto it. But so I don't lose too much of that dark blue in the corner, I'm going to use my craft stick to spread that out and then blend it by tilting it. And just trying not to lose too much of my resin as I'm tilting it. So it's a bit of a marriage between blending it with a stick and then tilting it. Oh, and I should mention that I, you can see that I dropped in some pink pigment there. You'll see why I did that in a moment. Once the board is covered in the canvas, I can start blending it out a little bit more, just um, softening up some lines. And immediately I'll start placing down these beautiful crystals. I've been dying to use them after I purchase them. I'm going to try just putting down some angel white first while I'm laying them down. It's the first time using this technique or doing this style of painting so I'm just experimenting as I go and because I've got those beautiful rose quartz crystals I'm going to place down some more of that pink so that's why I placed down the pink earlier. And now using my heat gun to make some whitewash I've got it set to about a medium fan speed not too high because I don't want to blow all those crystals around too much. A common problem with white not lacing and getting foam is because your white is not thick enough. It's important to leave it sitting in the cup for about 5 to 10 minutes after you've mixed it and even at longer, always test it first before you pour it. Temperatures will affect viscosity so sometimes your resin's thicker on some days and sometimes it's thinner. But now I've got that white wash laid down the base, I can start putting on my crystals again and using a pink just to make it look like it's bleeding out of that rose quartz crystals and it's a bit too bright so I can just lighten it with some white pigment. If I put the white over the top it'll make it a softer pink. But before I do that I can lay down some more crystals. These are tiny little rose quartz gem crystals. Now some people may think I'm overdoing it but I'm a big crystal fan and I just love heaps of them on there so I'm going for it. It is the most crystals I've ever used yet but I'm sure there's going to be plenty more paintings in the future with probably even more. And for some bling I'm going for this silver diamond dust by Lares. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so shimmery and I love how tiny it is. You just sprinkle it on with a spoon. Don't even try doing it with your fingers because it'll just go everywhere. Yep, been there, done that. Now to extend that bling into the water, I'm using a silver metal powder. I'm using the powder because you can get some lovely lacing with it when you use the heat gun to blow it out. But be sure to apply it with just a little toothpick, that's what I'm using, and tap it because a little really does go a very long way. And once this layer has dried, I will put another wave over the top. But for now, I was on the fence. Do I pull another line of white or not? It's getting to the point where it's um, getting unworkable, like I'm getting close to the end of my working time. So I tried to use the other blow dryer because I wanted a different effect. Different nozzles, different attachments can create different style of waves, but it just didn't have enough power in it. So that's why I switched back to my heat gun. I'll try it again here. Nope, not going to happen because it's too thick. The resin's too thick and there's not enough power in that. With art resin, you have about a 45 minute work time after you've stirred it. 
And because I let the white sit for five, 10 minutes, that cuts into the work time. So you have to be mindful of that. So always check the instructions on the brand of resin that you're using. And I'll use my blowtorch again to pop bubbles. And now these long craft sticks are so good for this, all the tiny little details. A lot of that silver diamond dust has sunk down into the resin, which will happen. So what I do afterwards when it starts to cure, like when it's at that sticky stage, I then sprinkle some more over it then so that it can also sit on top of the resin. Now a girl can never have too many crystals. So let's get the whack these ones out. They're from the res as well. And you can see some of that white lacing already forming and it's a really good combination that art resin and the angel white by La Res. And these shells are so special to me because my little niece collected them for me at our Christmas picnic this year. I was a little busy. I didn't get around to collecting shells so she ran around and did it for me and she asked me would I make a special painting using her shells. So I wanted, I thought, why not use it in this one? Because it's all about that lovely, unconditional love energy of the rose quartz crystals. And it's just a really peaceful, positive painting. So thank you for collecting them. They're beautiful and they just look amazing in this piece. In fact, a few of the kids were finding shells for me. They were so helpful. So I'll be using those in future paintings too. You can see all those grey dots in the water. That's the metal powder. Unfortunately, you can't see the shimmer at this angle. I'll show you it later at the end, along with some of the close-ups too. And here I can just apply some white over those really dark hot spots, what I would call, for the um, pink. So I let this layer dry overnight and sanded it back in the morning. I only sand over the area where I'm pouring that resin on. That's because the resin, the second layer needs to attach to the surface and it's just too slippery without it. So you've got to give it a bit of grit and a bit of tooth. Otherwise, it may be okay initially, but over time, the resin can actually peel off it if it doesn't have something to grip to. So that's why you sand it back and you don't worry that you can see all the sand lines. It looks like it's scratched, but the clear resin will just fill that in like magic. And I did just pour on the clear art resin, no colour because I'm happy with the colour underneath. And I did let this white sit for maybe 10 minutes. Could have even been 15 minutes because I wanted to make sure it was thick enough to form that three-dimensional wave. And I always test the resin thickness by pouring a line over some resin that's dripped off onto the table. When you're blowing out the white, you've kind of got to dance around it a bit because you can't leave that heat gun in the one spot for too long because the resin will burn. So I kind of just dance around and then come back over the same spot again. You'll get the hang of it. You've just got to do it and then you just find like a rhythm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. I'll answer all of them. And if you do want to grab a copy of my free ebook on what tools and materials I use, I'll leave the link to that in the description or bio link depending on where you're watching this. So my name is Michelle Tracy and thank you so much for watching.